Okay. Good evening, everybody. And a very warm welcome to you, Ankita, and to you, Neha. And <laughs> if it hadn't been for y'all, this wouldn't have really been possible. Yeah, so when you'll do the back end job for us, it becomes much more easier for us to like, you know, do the delivery. And yes, thanks a lot to Hitesh and joining hands for organizing this for everybody. And thank you all of you for being consistently present over here every Thursday and uh, making it worthwhile for myself and for yourselves about being on this planet and going through this lifetime together all of us hand in hand yeah it's a beautiful journey so moving on in this journey of life where are we going we have been in the third dimension right or as, as of until now and we are moving towards the fifth dimension now what is all this talk about third dimension fifth dimension and you know what happened to the fourth dimension then if this the third and fifth, what happened to the fourth one? Where did it go? <laughs> so yes, we are actually in the fourth st uh, dimensional state where we are transitioning from third to fifth. Okay. So the earth is already in a transition mode. Okay. It has already shifted big time from 3D to 5, 5D. Uh, remember in 2012, <clears throat> they said that the world is coming to an end right it wasn't the coming to an end what was coming to an end was an era Kal, uh, kalyug or yug what they call uh, in uh, hindi parlance so that one era got over in 2012 and the new era is officially going to begin in 2032 so this time in between 2012 and 2032 is the transition period all right we are moving from 3D existence to a fifth dimensional existence. Now, this shift is also a massive shift from a very masculine uh, existence to a more feminine energy existence. Okay, so we have the masculine energy has all been doing about the doing, doing, doing everything, right? So the feminine mode is going to be more about being in our own element, in our human element, and then taking the world, world a little more into uh, an evolutionary phase where we are going to evolve into a more uh, higher uh, state of consciousness. So the collective consciousness so far has been a uh, masculine energy. Everything has been like, you know, very patriarchal and we have been, um, involved in a lot of like you know uh, commercialism and uh, building and structuring and developing and everything so the nurturing has not been like uh, very conducive for growth okay there has been a lot of focus on just building 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 and it has been a very haphazard kind of uh, building so the growth has been there definitely but there has not been any nurturing in that growth. So that's why the whole lopsided um, energies of the masculine uh, overpowering the feminine energies that uh, need to be there on this planet. Uh, so while the earth is shifting, we also need to align our personal energies. Now this is the ma macrocosm the earth and the universe everything all right so what do we do at a personal level at a personal level at a microcosmic level we also need to shift along with the shifting energies of the earth okay so when we are doing that that is when the whole um, uh, the, the whole shift happens and when the, we are trying to make this shift what we need to do is to raise our, raise our vibrations from 3D to 5D. I'll come to 3D and 5D explanation a little later. Just bear with me for a little while. So when, what do you mean by move, uh, raising our vibrations? Raising our vibrations is basically masculine. What you have been doing is like working from the head space. Feminine is more working from the heart space. Okay. So 
raising our to raise our vibrations what we need to do is from move from the head space to our heart space now i'll ask you to do something just close your eyes and go into your head just take your focus your attention to your head go inside your head now what's happening over there what's happening your in your head somebody anybody unmute and talk please thoughts thoughts and thoughts thoughts and thoughts right like and how does that make you feel in in a sense of movement all the time in you know, a sense of movement swirling yeah. twirling that kind of thing wires going here and there total absolutely yeah so the would you say it is like peaceful or is it chaotic chaotic definitely it's chaotic right chaotic so it's a constant constant movement is there right okay now close your eyes and focus on your heart just go into your heart space oh look at the smiles <laughs> look at the smiles Now, how does that feel? What's happening over there? It's rhythmic. Whatever is happening, it's in sync. It's in a rhythm. It's like in a lup, rhythm. Lup. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the mind still thinking what's going on. The you know, much as I would like to go into the heart, the head is still saying why this is happening. Absolutely. Yes. When we are so used to living in the head all the time. going into the heart space becomes little difficult okay so yeah with practice you will be able to go there do that again vikran see how it feels because unless and until you feel it unless and until you experience it you're not wanting you you will not want to go there some stillness that's the word i'm starting to get sleepy yes so there's a stillness over there like sonal said right so the chaoticness turns into stillness and stillness is a space where creativity happens okay we all think that uh, having a cup of chai or like you know coffee or some red bull kind of a drink is going to like you know energize us and we are going to do this and we are going to do that and all. but actually what happens is like the creative process gets completely jacked if you notice creative people people from the film industry and like you know all those areas of work they go into this uh, what is what do they call that halo halo surgenic surgenic trans right they use those kind of products to put it very simply they use drugs okay drugs puts them into a trance and in that trance state they are able to get into the in, in touch with their creative selves that is why they resort to it so much when they are in a chaotic state of mind when they are constantly thinking when they are constantly talking with the uh, people and like you know having meetings and this and that they are not able to focus on their creative aspects the sad part is that they become addicted to it the same way some people become addicted to spirituality because spirituality is also a nasha it is also a very heady kind of stuff okay it could get addictive so yeah so that is about the heart space and the head space the second thing that we need to do to raise our vibrations is like enjoy receiving we love to give right we keep giving 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 like oh i love to give this one i love to give that like i love to give love i love to give money i love to give charity it makes us feel so good right so good so good oh my god i am the giver be the bigger person give just give jaane dena just give it well even if it is forgiveness be the bigger person give now close your eyes and imagine that you are receiving some Just imagine that you are receiving love, 
you're receiving a gift you're receiving flowers chocolates or maybe a vehicle or something that you had always wanted and somebody is just bringing it and gifting it to you and you're taking it how does that feel now? lovely full of joy peaceful peaceful yeah. full of joy heart <laughs> is fulfilled <laughs> you feel good right about receiving Okay. Now close your eyes and think about giving. You got to give this to that person. You got to give money to somebody. You got to give a lecture somewhere. You got to give a report to somebody. You got to give food to somebody. You got to serve khana. You have to give a tender to somebody, and so many things to give. So much to give. That's a contracting, tensing kind of situation. Yeah, my heart is getting hotter. Can you believe it? How the mind plays tricks with us. Be the bigger person. Give, 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 give. Hello, receiving is difficult. Giving is very really difficult. difficult. Because when you're giving, you're giving like this, okay? And when you're receiving, you're receiving like this. And to receive in this manner, what you have to drop. is your ego because when you drop your ego only then you are able to receive you cannot receive you be, you have to become very humble okay like okay i am willing to take i am willing to take mere haath aise hain to theek hai usme koi sharam ki baat nahi hai there's no shame in receiving it's a beautiful experience actually to receive you need to humble yourself but when you are giving you are full of like you know yourself ki like okay i'm giving i'm giving it's full of ego so that's why it's a little disturbing uh when you go out with a friend i had gone out with a friend of mine and uh, both of us were traveling and um, we stopped to somewhere to have a uh, breakfast and then after when we were coming back she wanted to buy some stuff and she said do you want anything and i was like not really then i saw something that i wanted she bought a lot of stuff and i saw something that i wanted and i was like okay i'm going to buy this so she said let it be i'll pay for it she paid for the breakfast she paid for that item that and i let her pay for it then later on we had lunch and we were coming back home and she said like okay we need to divide like you know we need to calculate how much like we spent in this whole trip um so let's add it up and divide it half and half i was like no let it be and she said why i said i paid for the petrol and the driver and you paid for the food and whatever you bought for me i said so it's okay it does not have to be half and half okay so i was in a complete receiving mode from her i was very happy that she was paying for my food and my little uh, uh gift that i got and everything and i was very happy and when i told her that like it's okay she was happy that like you know she got a ride free so it's the whole aspect of receiving when we get into calculations that's when things start getting really like you know frictional जब हम हिसाब रखने लगते हैं ना रिश्तों में दैट्स व्हेन द प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट्स बट व्हेन यू जस्ट गिव इवन व्हेन इट कम्स टू बर्थडेज एंड ऑल लाइक यू नो और क्रिसमस टाइम और दिवाली टाइम यू आर एक्सचेंजिंग गिफ्ट्स डू यू कीप अ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ लाइक यू नो ओके शी गेव मी दिस मच सो आई विल गिव हर दैट मच और यू जस्ट से कि लाइक ओके वी आर नॉट बाइंग गिफ्ट फॉर ईच अदर बिकॉज एनी वेज आई गिव यू सो मच का सो मच वर्थ ऑफ गिफ्ट एंड देन यू ऑल्सो हैव टू गिव मी सो मच वर्थ ऑफ गिफ्ट now that is a sauda that is a like you know commercial transaction but when you just give gifts for the sake of giving then the receiving becomes really like you know pleasant right so when we are in a receiving mode when we move from a head space to a heart space we raise our vibrations another more major thing that we can do to raise our vibrations is allow the energies to flow okay when we are doing something now listen to this neha very carefully when you are sitting over here you are not in the flow of things not just you 
but if i also had to do hajar things to organize this whole meeting my mind would be scattered here and there and i am not in the flow of this delivery then you understand what i'm saying so when you are not in the flow you are constantly trying to like you know okay now that i'm okay this thing is happening she is talking i'm doing the meditation with her but i i have to stop her if like you know she goes over the time i have to keep watching the time then what happens and then after that i have another session and i need to like you know get in touch with so and so person and like you know, there's so many things going on in my, in your mind right and there are also people in the house you got to attend to those things also so what happens is like you're trying to control the situation trying to bring the whole like you know thing together and then you're not in the flow of the process so when that happens our energies get stuck we are not raising our vibrations we are like you know kind of it's stuck somewhere what we need to do is like open the third eye now this third eye is over here okay in the middle of our forehead it's parallel to your eyebrows and it is believed that it is linked to our perception awareness and everything you know okay now where does the third eye have all its center it's somewhere inside inside the brain somewhere in the middle there yeah somewhere in the middle there right i'll tell you exactly where it is the top of your ears okay keep your fingers here top of your ears hmm? straight line from this to that end okay imagine a straight line from there to there now the top of the head now a straight line from top to down the intersecting point that's where your pineal gland is in the center of your head that activates your third eye behind that a little like 2 inches down okay there is the pituitary gland all these together and there's the hypothalamus and the thalamus and all these together they create a pyramid in your head and that activates your third eye so when your third eye is open then that's when you are in your element of clairvoyance visions and everything like you know falls into place when it comes to your spirituality now this might sound a little like you know spirituality sounds very esoteric it sounds very like you know mumbo jumbo types but when you actually go to see the entire science behind it this is how it works inside our brain however our pineal gland is not in its best of states because of all that has been with happening with us because of the way we have been all this time so there's something called calcification that happens of the pineal uh, pineal gland its original um, state is very crystalline in nature vikrant you're listening to this its original state is very crystalline in nature and because of all the debris or all the baggage that gets dumped on a pineal gland it doesn't function very well and it gets calcified over a period the calcification blocks our clairvoyance blocks our ability to see into the future or and our ability to have spiritual experiences okay so how we how we like you know enhance the quality of our pineal gland we'll come to that later so what happens here is when we are trying to meditate when we are trying to do uh, go into a trance like state for these spiritual experiences neha the pineal gland gets pressurized there's a lot of pressure on that pineal gland and that's why the pressure on the third eye 
and this is where then it's the tingling starts and the whole like you know the whole um, pressure starts building up and that causes the headache okay so what we need to do is be in the now okay we are either in the past or either in the present in the future so what we need to be is be present in the now be completely in the process be completely there here and or now and that is when we are able to be become one with the entire process and flow with it very easily and also be in the receiving mode and move from the heart space or uh, head space to the heart space so far so good yeah okay so at a physical level what happens is like Uh, the states of consciousness when we are going into a trance when we are doing the process we are moving into a alpha state or a theta state okay but when you are constantly thinking okay okay i need to do this also i need to do that also later on or before or tomorrow morning like you know what you are doing is you are moving from the theta state or the alpha state into the beta and the gamma state the gamma state is all about being totally like you know hyperactive and beta state is also about like being busy doing something so if any of you all are hypnotherapy students you all would know that going into hypnosis is going into an alpha state who are do who do theta healing they would know that you take the person into a theta state okay so those are the brain waves what i'm talking about is the alpha gamma theta these are all brain waves so during the process when the whole trance like thing is happening and you're going into the alpha and sometimes into the theta and like rajiv said he fell asleep so he went into the delta state okay that's the deepest state of it, complete sleep so the thing is the process is happening in alpha theta and for some of them in delta but then you are constantly struggling to be in the beta and the gamma state so can you imagine the conflict that is happening in the brain the huge conflict happening over there and like sonal said there's a lot of wiring or how over there to so short circuit to hona hi hai na bas and the short circuit is your headache got it so that's how it happens so now what does it mean to raise your vibrations it's nothing but moving from one state of consciousness to a higher level of consciousness until now what i was talking about was all about um, states of consciousness okay the alpha theta gamma rama and everybody else those were states of consciousness okay now i'm talking about levels of consciousness so the third dimension is the level of consciousness that we had been operating from on this earth until now all of us okay so this is this is a a uh, level of consciousness where we had been operating from a very materialistic point of view we are concerned about physical appearance body shape size job titles uh, possessions matter a lot oh i have to have a car i have to have a house i have to have branded clothes i have to have a job and then i have to have a better job and if i have to have a better job i also have to have a like you know proper designation and like better than that and so on and so forth there's a lot of competition owing to all this stuff okay because we are living in that materialistic state we are there's a lot of competition and when there is competition obviously there's going to be separation right because like i am against you you are against me who is better than her? my daddy strongest even children are taught my daddy strongest competition starts right from there you put it in a child's head like you have to come first if you if you don't come first like it's absolutely useless what happens to the other 50 students then they are all useless 
no they are not but that is how we have been like you know cultured ourselves to start thinking and the competition and the separation has been happening so there is also this whole thing about good and bad polarities so this is good and that is bad no gray areas if it is good it is good if it is bad it is bad nothing in between don't settle for the gray areas because gray areas are supposed to be bad okay <laughs> so this is the 3d level of consciousness that we have been living now what happens is when excessive of some excess of something happens supposing a uh, whoever is a non vegetarian over here okay every day every day every day every day you eat 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 one day it comes like you know if you like puking like hey aaj nahi khaya ja raha then you want something else you eaten too many spicy things you want something sweet right you want something sour yaar kuch meetha hai kya khane ke liye after a very spicy dinner or meal you will say right you know kuch meetha hai kya like you know thoda taste change karna hai i just want to change the taste of my palate so when excess of something happens you need a change and that is when you start moving into the 4d level of consciousness you feel like yaar bahut competition ho gaya yaar abhi nahi jhola jata like i can't do this any like too much like you know too much of structure too much of adherence to like you know the protocols and then you start getting fed up of your job 9 to 5 9 to 5 like every day in the morning i have to catch the 743 train and then in the evening like you know i have to like catch uh, have to do this and do that and all. and if i miss the bus then what happens it's so so much like structure like you know timetable life we are all living in like pigeon holes like early in the morning fly out of the pigeon hole go to the work and then in when night evening like twilight zone happens then like come back to the pigeon hole and like you know nest over there so that's the kind of life we have been living and then we get fed up we say ye kya life hai what kind of a life is this is it worth reliving at all and then you begin to ask all these questions and then the separation also starts bothering you we are living in the same house but we don't even talk to each other and then you complain to your children like why are you constantly in the phone why is constantly in the mobile or like you know on the internet why don't you talk to me so that separation starts bothering us a lot right and then the realization happens that somewhere we have to be connected as well right because if we are born in one family because if you are working in one unit in one organization there has to be some reason for it right we can't remain separated like that there must be some connection but because of which we are all come together like whole this group of people that who we are all sitting like you know in different parts of the country in the world or wherever we are why have we all come together there's some connectedness right there is something between the all of us which is common this realization starts sinking in and this is 4d level of consciousness then we start oscillating between the good and the bad the good oh the good was so nice then you want to go there those partying parties and like you know all those high life that we were so used to the smoking the drinking and like you know back slapping and everything and all and then there comes a time when you're like don't touch me how dare you like you know don't get into my space don't bother me you're getting invasive and the same person will say dude you like this 5 years ago what's wrong with you now isn't it that happens right and then you start move, like you know and then you think to yourself like yeah yeah what's wrong with me why am i behaving like this why am i behaving anti social right we start thinking of ourselves as anti social well we don't realize we are evolving we are becoming better basically we are getting closer to our own self we are loving our own persona we are loving our own space our own company okay we don't need other people to complete us like you know and but society tells us like you are behaving weird you are all wrong and then we keep like you know okay going back to the party zone and then are coming back into a personal space so we keep yo yoing between the and then we think that okay let me find the gray area i like the gray area the gray area is fantastic it's not as bad as people told me it was 
<laughs> because here i can be an extrovert and i can be an introvert when i want to be i can be social and i can be a recluse when i want to be i can be with people and i can be alone when i want to be and that space starts looking very nice and that is the space of the 4d level of consciousness through which all of us are going so while we are yo-yoing between the two the headache happens because we don't know whether we are coming or whether we are going okay now what is this 5d level with what is this fifth dimension how do we get there and what will happen when we actually get there and has anybody really gotten there or is it really possible to get there now this is the whole space of spiritual awareness this is where your faith starts becoming stronger in the unknown then you realize that structure is there but the structure need not be known to us all the time the plants the animals the sun the moon the stars everything everything moves according to a structure according to a discipline but not necessarily we know everything about them and then we start believing in universes and galaxies beyond the beyond and when we start looking at though that beyond the beyond and you feel like oh wow i am a part of this beautiful universe and this universe is all there for me and it is all one we are all one and then you start becoming one with everybody and everyone you feel the love for the other person you feel the compassion for the others you understand where they are coming from even if a person behaves like you know teda meda with you you're like ha yaar yeah, theek hai hota hai then you come from a space of understanding the other person with love and compassion then there is no competition then there is no separation because even after that person has like made hajar mistakes and that person comes back to you you will take that person back and say like ha theek hai happens let bygones be bygones but here the thing is to realize is like the precautions that we need to take will come back later to that or uh, will come back to that in a little while so there's no separation and there's no feeling of lack this total abundance you know everything is there for me you don't worry about like you know how tomorrow is going to turn out to be because you have faith and you have surrendered and you're going with the flow you are in a receiving mode so obviously abundance is like in plentiful and you know that this abundance is there for everybody there's enough for everyone you come from that space so that is the 5d level of consciousness and also your intuition starts becoming stronger in this space and that is why your faith also starts increasing and because your faith starts increasing you surrender even more easily and when you surrender more easily you begin to flow with the universal rhythm okay so this is how like we move from 3d to 5d and this is all uh, all about raise this is what is called the raising of vibrations as well okay moving from shifting from uh, one level of consciousness to the next and this is also called ascension okay ascension now ascension is how do we know we are in this process of ascension the headaches <laughs> okay the headaches the intense energy the stress that we feel the yo-yoing between the good and the bad between the polarities our behaviors our patterns of uh, old patterns beliefs and all they pull us in one direction our new age beliefs and like you know wanting to explore that pull us in another direction and that makes us feel very disoriented okay and we again like start feeling very like um, what's happening in my life what's happening where am i going am i really making the right choices or not i gave up my job which was so secure and great and everything and all like it was so well paying now suddenly like i'm like you no know, jump from the frying pan into the fire or have i like you know i don't know what i'm doing in with my life like people are telling me i'm stupid but i like doing this like so yeah so that disorientation is there 
and then a lot of aches and pains because this is a physical body of 3d existence it is not equipped to hold the light and that's why the aches and pains starts in the body okay it's like growing pains small children they have growing pains right they're uh, I mean, they'll be running around and be doing this and that and all. And they usually have pains in their legs and their bones and all. Mama, pair, dukre, mama, heart, dukre. And we are like, have you gone old already? Why are you like, you know, complaining about uh, joint aches and like, you know, body pain and everything and all? What's wrong with you? Those are growing pains, my dears. Those are growing pains. Every child goes through it. Right? So, when we are moving from 3D level to 5D level, we have these growing pains. We are evolving, darlings. We are becoming like, you know, rising to a higher level of consciousness. We are evolving. Uh, if Darwin's theory was to be believed, like, you know, from that monkey thing and like, you know, we want so kitna dardua from monkey state to this state. Like, though I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that we came, we, we were monkeys earlier. I don't believe in that. But even if you do believe in that, think about it. Changing from a monkey or an ape to this, 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 this beauty. Kitna taklif, kitna bone structure change and facial change and hair change and all. Must have been painful, dude. Isn't it? So yeah, those are growing, uh, growing pains. You'll also like experience a lot of like, you know, loss of um, who am i what am i doing in this world why am i born so all these questions start coming and then they give you sleepless nights and suddenly in the middle of the night two o'clock you'll wake up and like why can't i sleep i've been working so hard i should be tired i need to sleep but i'm wide awake and then you try to do some work and you can't do that also and then when you actually have to do something what you want you're so sleepy you're so sleepy and you're like okay so you go into this periods of sometimes two, three days when you just want to sleep, 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 sleep. And then there are days when you are so wide awake, day and night, you're wide awake. So those are also this transition phases. Your sensitivities also get very heightened. You might cry for no reason at all. Yeah. And you sit and ask, why am I crying? What's wrong with me? Suddenly, you'll just have a bout of like, you know, outburst. You have very little patience with people who are not on your wavelength. Okay, to say it, to put it very mildly. Those who are not on your wavelength, you have absolutely no patience with them. People who are slow. You're like, come on, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, the irritation factor becomes very high. Because you feel ki like, you know, the world is so far ahead, what are you doing? Like, chalo. You know, that's the basic general thought in the head. So your patience is very low with these kind of people. And um, yeah, very, very intolerant. And then you try to tell yourself, I'm a good person. I shouldn't do this. I should be nice. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> And then you sit and think like, Arre yaar, poor guy, like, you know, poor girl, like, I shouldn't have said that, so it's not her fault. So like, see, see, you're yo-yoing again, like, you know, good and bad. Like, poor thing, like, you know, she doesn't understand, like, why simply at all I shouted at her, like, if she doesn't know, she doesn't understand, like, it's okay. Then you become accepting of her, but then again, at the same time, you're irritated also. Food habits change big time. Foods that you liked sometime, you loved them and suddenly you're like, I'm off it. I'm giving this up. I don't want this anymore. I don't even know why I liked it anymore. You go through phases of fatigue, total fatigue in the body. Very tired. You just can't get out of the bed. You don't want to, but you have to. Lots of emotional ups, down, downs. And there's also a feeling of wanting to go home. Now that home, pata nahi kahan par hai ye home like, lekin jana hai. I want to go home. You, this is not home. This earth is not home. I want to go home. Don't even know where it is, but I want to go home. And that again like puts us into a depression state. Dreams become very vivid, very wild kind of dreams. You can't make head nor tail of what happened. 
in the dream and you're like am i going mad or what so all these situations all these things happen while we are in this transition phase and so what we need to do is spiritual cleanse what we need is a spiritual cleanse the first thing to cleanse can anybody tell me what the cleansing can be about Your yeah, physical body. Physical body, yes. What else? Mental, mental and emotional stuff. Hey, lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh-huh. Emotional stuff. Okay, the emotional stuff is what creates the entire havoc in our life. I swear. It starts with our mind. We think something, and then we create an emotion around that thought, and then we build on that emotion. like that like that like you know like cancer it starts like building 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 like bigger and bigger bigger and bigger and then it engulfs us and then we start behaving in a manner which is very uncharacteristic so this all happened this whole cancer thing happened in the 3d existence okay we created that now the 4d is about shedding all that cancer so shedding all the emotions so obviously How? we need to go through the inner child um cleansing the shadow self cleansing and whatever like you know past life whatever whatever wherever these emotions have come from you go back to the root of that emotion or that incident and then from there you clear and cleanse it so that your now is more more expansive okay so that is one of the things physical uh, cleansing would obviously be about like more um, getting into the exercise mode keeping your body as active as possible and it also helps to release all the emotional baggage as well so when we have um, done the release of the emotional baggage through any kind of therapy or any kind of uh, counseling or whatever you might call it you can add a physical activity like dance movements like there's a lot of like therapies of uh, dmt and stuff right you all must have heard about it so you all can go for all that if not that just put on some music and dance like crazy to it that helps shed whatever um, wherever the emotions are stuck at a cellular level in the physical body because it's very important to shed it from the physical body also wherever it is stuck of course there are other methods like praying and asking for support connecting uh, with your divinity connecting with the higher realms or uh, your gratitude journal all these things help you for your soul cleanse and uh, the your spiritual cleanse and it kinds of works as a soul maintenance program okay it's a soul maintenance program and you need to keep up the good habits aisa nahi ki ek bar cleanse ho gaya to like you know you go back into the 3d existence and start that competition and like you know separation and everything all over again because then again like there is no promotion or like you know graduation to the next level if you keep demoting yourself then it doesn't really work so a soul maintenance program has to be there how do you do that get into some energy healing modalities try and learn something something like reiki pranic healing access bars theta healing angel therapy magnified healing all these energy healing modalities they help to clear our physical emotional and all the auric bodies that are there there's a lot of stuff that uh, there are a lot of uh, auric uh, bodies around us layers to our aura okay so the energy healing helps to clear all our aura one by one or uh, uh, the layers of our aura one by one okay so if you all can learn something like that it will be absolutely fantastic because that um that is a part of 
you're um, moving to the next level of uh, consciousness, moving to the next dimension. Because the modalities or the work that we had been doing in the 3D existence obviously hadn't served us. That's why we, we moved to the free uh, 4D level of consciousness, right? So to maintain that and to enhance that, we obviously had to do something different than what we did earlier. So energy healing modalities are what um, will help uh, in uh, uh, maintaining the 5D level uh, evolution that we uh, get to. What else? Sleep well, exercise, eat well, eat clean food. I've already spoken about this in my previous uh, session, so I'm not going to really go there much. Um, you can use essential oils. You can use uh, crystals. The essential oils that you all can use is like um, frankincense, sage, uh, myrrh, angelica, these kind of oils you all can use. Crystals you all can use for uh, clearing the home and self. Um, what is it called? Clear cords is the master crystal. It can be used for any and every purpose. Other than that, uh, you all can use lapis lazuli for um, better communication, rose quads for obviously um, for love and compassion, amethyst to um, become um, become more uh, spiritually inclined or like you know to raise your spiritual quotient and um, yeah improve your third eye as well and um, to protect yourself you can use crystals like tiger's eye smoky quartz or uh, black tourmaline selenite is a good crystal which is self cleansing uh, so that doesn't need to be cleansed um, on and off uh, the other uh, others that i mentioned they need to be cleansed uh, once they are saturated after absorbing all the negativity in our surroundings and from within us and around us one wonderful um, crystal that I found recently was called uh, uh, rhodochrosite. Okay. It integrates the physical and the spiritual energies. And it stimulates love, passion and opens the heart. It lifts depression and it's a beautiful uh, stone. I happened to chance upon it the last month when I went to a crystal shop. My friend wanted to buy some crystals for her daughter, so I took her there and I found this uh, rhodochrosite over there. The moment I held it in my hand, the vibrations that I felt, I was like, oh my God, what is this? And it's such a beautiful pink color crystals with like, you know, um, darker pink and lighter pink and white uh, lines all going through it. It's beautiful. So it's a very vibrant and very powerful crystal. So if it's going to help you integrate the physical and the spiritual, just imagine how beautiful it's going to be like, you know, for the transition from, uh, I'll now say 4D to 5D because we are already in 4D. Okay. Uh, what else? Coming to the diamond. Coming to the crystalline aspect of it. The calcification of the uh, pineal gland. The pineal gland was originally said to be of crystalline in nature. Okay. And the calcification is what makes it um, not so crystalline. So when we do all these practices, okay, the calcification starts clearing. And when the calcification starts clearing, the pineal gland comes starts becoming crystalline once again and that is what builds the crystalline body so from a carbon body we turn more crystalline it's not that suddenly we'll become like a diamond no <laughs> okay it's not like we become diamond we become all crystalline like like that no <laughs> it is that our pineal gland calcification starts like you know 
uh, clearing and it again gets its crystalline form the word if you go to see also resonates or rhymes with christ so god consciousness christ consciousness krishna consciousness buddha consciousness whatever you call it that crystalline body starts getting formed you become christ like you become crystalline you become god like make sense yeah so yeah just the way carbon is like you know compressed under pressure and then it becomes diamond we are compressed and pushed by our situations by our uh, experiences and everything and then we become crystal and we become like a diamond <laughs> got it so yes and that's how a crystalline body gets formed and we build our light body now what is the light body you have heard people who are uh, doing spiritual work they are called light workers you all have heard that yeah so what is this light worker thing which is that we by doing this spiritual practices we build our light body we be it's not that we become light as a feather no we build our light body we to put it very simply we become like a just imagine like a beam of light just imagine yourself to be a nice candle with a nice wick over there like you know shining brightly so it's a beam of light which passes through us coming from the source going straight down into the center of mother earth this is what we do in grounding and attuning during in, uh, before uh, all the meditations right so we are creating that pillar of light that pillar of light keeps us connected to the higher realms to the source and to the earth this whole pillar of light passes or is around us and we are just imagine we are in the middle of it making sense are you understanding what i'm saying yeah no what did you not understand <laughs> got it till you said we are the wick after that okay forget the wick okay forget the wick <laughs> okay just imagine yourself as a beam of light a beam of light which is extended right from the source right from the source the home where we want to go yeah we don't know where it is like but that beam of light wherever god is high up there coming straight down through us going straight down into mother earth so we are connected with mother earth and we are connected to father sky we are grounded and we are attuned and that is the whole pillar of light now that light body the more you are you practice the spiritual uh, practices energy work and um, everything else that i mentioned earlier the more you do that the more the light body becomes stronger and solid okay and that, that is what um, light worker is all about so the more we work on ourselves the more we become uh, light beings not that will suddenly like disappear like a light but yeah and um, also our Uh, we have a twelve strand DNA, right? So scientifically, they say that only two strands of DNA are actually working, and the ten strand, the remaining ten strands of DNA, science doesn't know why it is there with within us, what it is there for us, and it's called junk DNA. Okay, yeah. so this this junk dna is actually what is um what spirituality spirituality or spiritual practices activates the rest of the dna the rest of the dna strands and or the whole 12 strand dna becomes activated and then we are able to uh, have intuitive qualities we are able to connect with the higher realms and people who are more into these kind of practices they also do astral travel and so so many other things okay so yeah 
that's what it is in uh, hinduism also with this pillar of light you can see mentioned um, um shiva shiva yeah so the shivling okay the shivling is actually if you will google and see lingod bhava okay so shiva is the pillar of light there is this whole story which goes um, saying that uh, brahma and vishnu they were fighting to like you know for supremacy like who is the better one who is the stronger one and stuff like that so then um, this pillar shiva appears as the pillar of light and they try to find the ends of the pillar of light i think brahma goes down or up i am not very sure of the whole story but uh, yeah but none of them are able to find the two ends of the pillar so it's like an infinite pillar and then it is revealed that uh, that pillar of light is actually shiva the beginning and the end so there that is the pillar of light that you connect with that you become and you light the god consciousness within yourself the beginning and the end that like that like that like that okay so any questions fantastic information what is the name of the crystal again which crystal the last one you said you had held it in your hand rhodochrosite okay thank you rhodochrosite it's a beautiful pink color i have it somewhere so you mentioned about some precaution or something so i'll tell later uh yeah the precautions are all like um, shielding yourself grounding yourself smudging your house okay um smudging is nothing but uh, the dhoop agarbatti that we do in the house okay or uh, you all can burn incense you all can use essential oils in diffusers clear and cleanse the space salt salt water baths or uh, swab the floors with salt water like not a lot just a handful you put it in the water dissolve it and then like you know clean the house you can keep uh, salt lamps in the house they are very good uh, to absorb any kind of negativity around the house uh, like i mentioned the uh, stones that you all can keep are uh, black tourmaline if you can get big rocks of uh, black tourmaline you can keep it around the house in every room uh, you all on a personal um, level you all can wear these uh, to protect yourself to clear your energies there is also tiger's eye which helps you like you know to ward off evil so all these precautions you can take to keep keep your energies clean and of course the main thing main precaution that you need to do is like maintain your boundaries okay even though you feel oneness with everybody yeah you still need to stand in your own power and be very discerning about who you let into your circle and create those boundaries so that your personal space is not violated how to create that ma'am that comes by and by that you have to learn that when you start uh, loving yourself when you actually love yourself you will stand up for yourself you will learn to say no creating a boundary starts with saying no there are so many things that we do for other people and for like you know society or office work or there's so many things which go against our the very grain of our soul character at a soul level we know this is not right to do but we just go ahead and do it so we need to stand up for ourselves and say like no boss i'm not doing this so those are the thing if it is bothering you it is like like i said uh we find people irritating we find people like you know invading our space so instead of getting irritated with them instead of like you know shushuing them or anything like we can say ki like dude i need my space 
I mean, it sounds very cliche that I need space, but it's a very real thing. It's a very real thing. Jyotika, one question. Yeah. How do we know about the authenticity of a crisp? You know, a normal person would not... You buy, you buy it from person who you trust. Yeah. That's very important. You buy it from people who are genuine uh, dealers in this. I know two people um, who deal in uh, good crystals and uh, really genuine stuff. So don't go for cheap stuff. Crystals and all uh, if they are coming to you cheap, then they may not really be great. Those who have authentic stuff will never bargain. They will not make even one naya paisa less. So, How about emerald, Jutika? Sorry? How about emerald? I'm not really a crystal person, darling. I, do, I haven't really learned about crystals. I just know which ones to use, when, how, and I've shared that with you. So you. what emerald does, I really don't know because I've never used emerald. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Only a person who, who's dealing in crystals will be able to tell you that. I have shared with you what uh, I know, what I use and uh, what I've seen. Shutika ji, can you please guide a bit on three subjects? One is mental chatter. Mm. One is uh, how to kind of cleanse the emotional weaknesses. Okay. And uh, when you said uh, head space to heart space, yeah, literally could not get into the heart space, head space only. Yes. So what practice how to practice and uh, receiving i as you say receiving i'm in the sheer mention of receiving brings a block yeah so you need to see where the receiving block has happened there could have been a past experience or uh, past teaching where you have been it has been ingrained in your subconscious or even your unconscious mind that um, receiving is not a great thing to do. Receiving makes you a smaller person. Receiving makes you a weaker person. Being in a receiving position is um, like uh, becoming uh, beholden to the giver. Isn't it? Perfectly becoming... fine. But how do we get into that space to recognize, yes, this is where I got it from? You'll have to go through a therapy session for that. All right. You'll have to go through a therapy session for that. Uh, there are, um, you could go through hypnotherapy. Um, mental, chatter, mental chatter kind of just kills it for me. Uh, mental chatter for that, uh, you'll have to go and uh, practice meditation. <laughs> um, now that you've brought it up, maybe next time I'll take up how to get into a meditative space because there's a lot of people Apun have that problem. Huh? Okay. So, yeah, meditative, a lot of people find it difficult to get into a meditative space because of the mind chatter. So, yeah, maybe one day I'll take up a session on that as well. One day, no, next time, please. Okay, next time. Thank, Thank you so much. We'll wait. Yeah, and you had a third question, right? Some what was the uh, second question? Uh, basically, uh, the, fir the first one was on mental chatter. The second was one on emotional. How do we cleanse our emotions which are disturbing us? Yeah, again therapy. Again, again therapy. Ther therapy. Yeah. Okay. If you don't want to go into an invasive therapy like hypnotherapy or something like that, you could probably go for radical healing. Okay. Yeah. So radical healing is all about uh, getting into um, into an affirmation uh, therapy type, like you know. So it right. works beautifully, without uh, invading your uh, private space. Right. It does okay. It doesn't need you to go into past life. It doesn't need you to go into like you know any other uh, any other um, inner child or shadow self or anything. It just deals with like the here and now, and mm -hmm. gradually like. Uh, peels off the layers of uh, emotional debris that that might be it works well thank you, you so uh, much. again eft also works beautifully for that right eft also will work like it 
it's the tapping and all that. I right. don't know. I I don't know that, but uh, whoever does tapping, you could probably right. um, contact that person. Right. If uh, you want deeper work, then I would definitely suggest hypnotherapy or transpersonal regression. The day I get a feel, yes. Otherwise, certainly I'm looking forward to doing the initial basic course with you and yeah, see sure. how things are and all. Anything to uh, anything, uh, any guidance for that receiving a bit of it? How can we uh, be more open to receiving um, uh, besides that hypnotherapy and stuff? Uh, how to be more open to receiving? You'll have to see where the block is, no? We'll have to see where the block to receiving has happened and okay. why is this block uh, to receiving? All right. So right now, I don't think we have the time for it. Otherwise, I would have I would have taken you through a brief um, a radical process like, you know, and you could have probably unpeeled at least a couple of layers, but uh, wow. we've already shot, overshot our time. Wow. And I don't think we have a time for the process also. No, this was a beautiful, as I said, ki the uh, the session, the two sessions uh, before the thing that you took was beautiful. Today, it was again one of the beautiful sessions. Ki yes, the basics are being kind of prodded upon and made to yeah. think upon and worked upon. Beautiful. Yeah. Connects with me, resonates with me. Thank you so much that's the whole thing like you know when um, we have been used to living um, in the head for so long because we have been using the left brain more often and we have so habituated to using only the left brain even spirituality needs to be explained logically <laughs> to everybody oh, it's, yes. a, oh, yes. it's, it's a very illogical um, modality or way of living actually but still, we need that logical explanation, that reasoning, ki ye kahan se hai, kyun hai, how. And yeah, we are intelligent beings. We are, like we, like I said, we have the God particle in us. So we find a way to find a logical, like, you know, answer to everything that is. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, thank you so much. The whole point is connect. I mean, I feel that connect, that is it. That is all that matters to me personally. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Ma'am, okay. Can I ask you a question, please? Yes, sir. Raj, tell me. Yeah, ma'am. When we do your meditations and all, we get such higher vibrations. That, but uh, you know, in that we get benefited. But some other people started showing up, like my Bajuwala's mother. She was dead past five years before she started coming. I mean. I she didn't affect me anything, but I can see her. But why should why I am seeing those things? So I just want to say that can we create some some boundary like uh, which smudging, benefit is smudge your house every day, smudge your house, okay. pray, fortify yourself with prayers, smudge your house morning evening. Um, keep those crystals that I spoke about, especially black tourmaline and stuff. Keep salt clamps in the house. So clean the house with salt water. Have a salt water bath. All these things I'm help to like, you know, I am doing every day. Energies. I am doing all, already uh, doing havan and all so many big things I'm doing. Then so what's the problem? Then, then even, if she, even if you see her, then it's okay. No, She's not there. only see. So many dead people, you know, why do they come? I, I mean to say that in meditation, is there any technique where we can put some boundaries like nobody else? I want to benefit from it. I do not want see the grounding to... and shielding that I have already taught you all. Okay, the grounding and yeah. shielding that I've taught you all. It works to shield you from all these. Now the mind is such okay. that it will create these images, it will create these thoughts, and these thoughts could be about dead people also. Okay, but as long as you're strong in your faith that you have created those boundaries by grounding yourself, by shielding yourself, by doing all the havan and agarbati and everything that like, you know, clearing the space of uh, all these things, in the, then you don't really have to be afraid or worried about anything. Okay, okay. Um, if you still feel concerned about it, um, you could... Uh, 
do the chakra balancing stuff you could ask a, um, a reiki uh, practitioner to uh, check your aura to clear and cleanse your aura to seal your aura okay and see if there are any cracks or like any um, distensions in your aura and a reiki practitioner will very uh, nicely like uh, seal your aura for you so you need to check that on a personal level then okay our aura cracks uh, quite often and um, yeah that's another big topic can't go there <laughs> why that happens <laughs> i can't go there now it's too big a topic right? okay so yeah we are at 820 now yes uh, jyotika thank you so much for remembering and you know penny down and doing it this week thank you so so much did it help you neha yes it very much did and uh, it helped uh, put things into words which i could not understand but i knew were there so okay. and you've also given direction in terms of uh, what to go forward how to do it so i think eventually uh, as in how the energy resonates it will all unfold and happen so thank you for really uh, picking up the subject addressing it and it helps beyond words so thank you so much my pleasure i'm glad you asked that questions because like you know when you'll ask questions when you'll bring forth all these kind of like problems then we are able to like you know kind of give solutions to it or like explain to you in detail and all so yeah it's lovely thank that you asked that question thank you thank you so much my pleasure darling okay so are we ready to wrap it up i don't think we have time for a process right now yeah thank you so yeah. much jyotika okay we really love thank you thank you most welcome thank you so very okay. much god bless most you most welcome most welcome thank, thank you bye thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.